So this is called the state of the COC. It's also got some kind of basic information in it. Uh, uh, for those of you who are not as familiar with the COC continuum of care uh, system. So um, the most of these uh, slides here are entitled, what is the COC? And since I, my uh, reading uh, ability from that distance is limited, uh, I'll just tell you um, my uh, impression of what the COC is. So a continuum of care was, was created by the federal government in order to um, coordinate the activities of all of the uh, various um, constituents in an area. Some, are, some COCs are a county, some are a city, some are a region. Uh, ours uh, is the combination of uh, three smaller COCs, uh, the County of Alameda, uh, Oakland and Berkeley. And so uh, we are now one uh, combined COC. Our financing comes through a federal grant uh, that is uh, received uh, every year, is renewed, uh, and it has a, a competitive process, which many of you have uh, participated in. Um, in um, Alameda County, we call our COC um, Everyone Home, and uh, we've attempted to make it more than just uh, this federally uh, chartered organization. We're uh, attempting to make it a movement to end homelessness in Alameda County. So uh, this movement is made up of government. Uh, it's made up of providers uh, uh, of services, and it's made up of concerned citizens uh, who want to uh, end homelessness in our county. We do, as you can see, uh, the, there's a big challenge here. The federal grant is only around $75 million a year. You've seen that the total for a five-year um, solution is $2.5 million. Uh, we are chronically, uh, un, uh, billion, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michelle, for keeping an eye on those dollars. Uh, so that does not include, as Michelle has reminded us many times, uh, the, co the capital cost of building housing or restoring it or upgrading it, which is our uh, one of our biggest single problems. So um, our COC is uh, attempting to take on a big project in the, in the last um, few years. Uh, we have reorganized ourselves. We, were, we originally only had a group of maybe around 30, 40 people. Now we've got over 150 people, including a third of the people with uh, experience of homelessness. We tried to um, profile our organization so that it matches uh, the racial uh, makeup of the count, uh, which is 50% uh, people uh, black and African-American origin. So. Um, we are uh, attempting to uh, do this, approach our job in a much more holistic way. So um, we've got uh, a number of, um, uh, we also get involved in um, uh, ESG emergency solutions grants. And we also um, you know, provide assistance for all kinds of other um, activities and try to coordinate all the activities in Alameda County having to do with solving homelessness. So this is a, a chart here that is broadly describes us. As you can see, uh, the racial equity committee, which you have um, heard from just recently, is sort of surrounding our whole organization. We have subcommittees, which, um, Simone will talk to you a little bit about in a minute. And um, we also have some operational committees such as uh, the NOFO committee and nominations committee, which um, help select uh, people. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that in a minute. So um, we also, the organization itself does not have a budget or employees. Uh, we are a board and we're all volunteers. Uh, but we uh, have entities that carry out the activities for us. Uh, here they're named the Backbone Committee, which is basically just uh, uh, functions of minutes and operating meetings, organizing things such as this. Uh, a homeless um, information system uh, administration where we have to oversee that. Uh, we have the coordinated entry system, which uh, needs to also be managed uh, and operated. And uh, we also have 
a collaborative applicant, uh, which uh, applies for the federal funding as well as coordinates other funding. And then we also have to do some policy and planning. So all of these entities are uh, have are right now occupied occupied in one way or another by uh, the housing and homelessness uh, or organization that is part of the Alameda County um, Health. Uh, so we have or with this or these organizations we have memorandum of understandings which get um, which tell us the leadership board. Uh, what are the roles and responsibility of each one of these entities? And that's how we can carry out the uh, policies of the board. Uh, this is just sort of showing again what the various entities do and what their sections are, since we're trying to move through this more quickly. Uh, I think these slides will be available on the website. Um, this year we have, um, since our last meeting with you, uh, we have consolidated all of the committees uh, and uh, started operating uh, in, a, in a full manner. We've developed an AI policy that's artificial intelligence. We have, uh, we're trying to, you know, see how that works with uh, our work. Uh, we have this racial equity framework, which you've uh, just been presented with. Uh, we've um, uh, launched all of our committees and uh, got them, uh, up and running, um, and we have gone through at least one round of uh, notice of funding uh, of opportunities, NOFO. Uh, we were very successful this year in getting additional uh, funding, uh, thanks to some of you in this room. Uh, and uh, we've uh, got an additional separate uh, funding opportunity uh, for the uh, unsheltered uh, uh, funding. Uh, as well as uh, conducted the pit count, which many of you were here, that's point in time count, which gives us a lot of information about whether uh, how our system is working or not. And we've also responded to a number of the HAP applications. Those, um, uh, as we've been told, are from the state and they are uh, short-term funding, but we uh, appreciate getting the funds when we can. So, Here's the uh, committee update, which I think Simone is gonna take care of. Thank you. So first, before I get into the updates, if everyone who is on a committee, if you can stand up. All right. Thank you. So we appreciate all of your participation and support with the COC that ultimately supports our whole homeless system throughout Alameda County. And I just want to recognize that everyone who just stood up is volunteering to participate on these committees. And so this is in addition to their personal lives, in addition to any work responsibilities. So just thank you again for all your support. So I'm gonna go through some quick um, updates, we have six minutes. So the racial equity committee, you just heard from them, they've set racial equity um, liaisons. So all of the committees have liaisons from the racial equity committee on their committees and on the leadership board. They've developed the racial equity framework, which is now being shared with the committees for input and feedback. So if you are on a committee, make sure you review that and provide your thoughts. The COC Standards Compliance and Funding Committee, they've supported the launch of the annual NOFO, which is where the COC submits a collaborative application for COC funding. And that includes reviewing and scoring factors and performance measures, supporting outreach. My eyesight's not that great either. <laughs> <laughs> Try, trying to see, supporting outreach to potential new project applicants, updating the local competition process and supporting continuous improvements in programming. They're also collaborating with the Racial Equity Committee. The HMIS committees review the HMIS policies and procedures and the HMIS lead monitoring tools. So HMIS is the Homeless Management Information System. It's the system where we are required to input all homeless data and all jurisdictions are required to use this system. So the HMIS committee oversees that database and they've also approved policies and a monitoring tool for annual monitoring of HMIS. 
the Housing Capacity Committee has worked with the county housing and homeless and housing department to research current housing inventory and review the gaps in housing capacity and the sources of data. They've conducted a survey and are continuing to work with the Alameda County Housing and Homeless Services to learn about property owner engagement and incentive strategies that could increase housing capacity by reducing barriers for people to access housing. Housing Stability and Homelessness Prevention Committee has been learning about prevention efforts in and throughout the county. And the goal is to create a landscape of all current prevention strategies and projects in Alameda County. Outreach Access and Coordination, they formed an unsheltered work group. They're processing annual review and recertification of coordinated entry policies and procedures. The System Impact Committee researched various data sources to measure performance and system impact, and they explore the connections between data sources and the goals. The Youth Committee received a request from the NOFO work group for input and feedback for the, on the NOFO, NOFO local competition and spent the last few months exploring the local competition and scoring factors, brainstorming recommendations, and they'll finalize their input next month. So again, shout out to everybody who is working hard and diligently putting in your efforts on these different committees. And we now will transition to nominations. Yeah, so we're gonna talk briefly about nominations. So um, <clears throat> the, um, Currently, the, uh, there is a nominations committee. This is actually the first time that this committee has uh, been in uh, fully uh, empowered uh, to uh, put nominations before the leadership board as well as this uh, group, the committee, the um, general membership. So um, we, are, uh, we have all of our standing committees, which uh, Simone just uh, described to you. There are 14 uh, openings coming up in that. Some people have timed out. Some people have um, not been able to serve for one or another. Uh, we also have uh, some leadership board positions that are coming up. Uh, we uh, have about six or seven that uh, we're uh, filling this year uh, due to either people being timed out or uh, needing to move on to other uh, activities. So uh, we are uh, in the process of doing that now. And um, we have uh, <clears throat> also have a couple of seats, which at our next meeting, uh, we will send out materials to all of you or everyone who is on our uh, mailing list in the um, for the general uh, membership meeting. Uh, we will have uh, s uh, some positions that are elected directly by uh, this group, but uh, that won't happen today. It will happen at the next meeting, so we can give you a little bit of time to um, either uh, nominate yourself or others uh, to uh, come and speak before us. Uh, <clears throat> Currently, um, we have um, uh, the nominations committee is working to fill three seats for with people with lived experience and two seats for uh, nonprofit service providers. We had an open um, uh, an, an open uh, call for people interested in that. We had around forty or fifty people uh, come. We've uh, we're reviewing their qualifications and we'll be conducting interviews over the next um, few, um, uh, next, I guess, April and May, we'll be conducting interviews and then have them confirmed by the uh, leadership board. And then at our next meeting here, we'll have them confirmed by you. So um, we uh, are hard at work trying to make sure that uh, the 150 or so positions that have been opened up by our new um, uh, configuration are uh, filled with people eager to do the work. So um, this is just a ne the names of the people who are on this, myself. Uh, we also have people from uh, the uh, 
racial equity and Lord, we help people with lived experience. Uh, and we also have some uh, people who are put on by their position. Uh, so uh, we now have a time for public comment. And uh, we have, a, I don't know whether we have a list or not, but we do have an open mic here. 